environmental science, blue sky science, it's really essential to make progress and not everything needs to have immediate economic gain. It is in the long run that we as humanity make progress and it sometimes needs something very uh, abstract like looking for meteorites or looking for space rocks on, a, on an isolated part of the planet to figure out where we come from and where we're going. So over the last few years we've worked in the area around Princess Elizabeth in the Surrounding Mountains, both to the south and to the east. And now we want to take it to the next step, which is a mountain chain called the Belgica Mountains, which is about 300-350 kilometers away from here to do the same things that we did here before. So, so basically we look where ice is actually uh, moving upward and in satellite images this is looking blue, so we're looking for blue ice, literally speaking, on the satellite images. Science is, is built by questions that you have in your mind and still there are so many questions to answer and uh, we can give some grains of sand to this full beach called science. It's been very rewarding um, by doing this kind of high-level uh, research in an environment that not a lot of people get the chance to, to, to visit. I will be the first uh, people going back as a research mission to the Belgica since the, since the, the 60s. 60s, the 60s. Yeah. So um, it's very promising and we very much look forward to that, uh, for sure. There's always a chance that we find a meteorite that is the next piece of the puzzle that can help us to understand some very fundamental questions like where does the water on our planet come from? Where do the organics come from? Um, how did Earth evolve into this beautiful dynamic planet that we have today? So next to the meteorites, we're also looking for micrometeorites. Micrometeorites uh, are fragments smaller than two millimeter. Uh, that's more or less what we can state. They're very tiny. So despite they are very small, they also hold the potential to sample asteroids, comets that you cannot sample through ordinary meteorites. This is the first day in Belgica camp. Going out for a early look. Belgica Mountain. Looking for meteorites. 15 of December. Uh, very close this year, not too. Uh, so there is a high possibility that there are more. Uh, because whenever you have a meteorite, usually it's possible that you're gonna find another fragment of the sample. So that's what we're going. Uh, can somebody take right. a ice sample? Not over here anyway. I can do it. What's also very interesting is that there is a tight connection between the ice and the meteorite. We can use the meteorite to say something about the age of the ice, which means that we can uh, deduce, based on the ages of the meteorites, how old the ice exactly is. And this means that we can make kind of maps of the surface ice, which tells us uh, what is going on in these particular areas. You can see a typical granite coming from here. I don't find 
mind me try? The International Polar Foundation, they have helped us so much to achieve this objective to find meteorites and probably this will not be possible without them. And uh, the role of each one here is so important and it's the same in different parts of the world, in different social environments. It's, it's, you just need to, to love what you are doing. So the meteorites will uh, stay in frozen uh, form, so we will bring them, ship them back to Belgium in frozen state where they will be um, processed under uh, controlled conditions. After that, meteorites become available to the entire scientific community. 